Hi everyone, welcome to the Women's Circle. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Elaine and I'm one of the worship leaders and small group leaders here at Three Crosses. Now, I will fully admit that I was one of the last people to sign up for uh, the Women's Circle devotional. And, uh, and I was like, oh, okay, women of the Bible, who am I gonna talk about? Ooh, great idea. And I look in the list and already there. Um, then I was like, oh, what about, ooh, ooh, I got a great one. And now that one was on the list as well. So I spent a number of weeks just wondering like, okay, God, who do you want me to talk about? I have no idea. And, uh, and I came down to um, something that I read in the news, which was the new conversation that we're having around the new normal, about how long it's going to take for us to come out of this, um, this pandemic. And I was like, what happens if it doesn't get any better? Right. And, and I fully admit, you know, I fully believe that it's going to get better. You know, we're going to go back to regular normal. But but there was this element of like, well, if it doesn't get any better, will that change anything? And so that actually brought me to um, this particular woman in the Bible who I believe was in this situation where just like the future was not guaranteed. And that was the person of Elizabeth. Now we normally talk about Elizabeth within the context of Christmas because, you know, the only place she's mentioned in the Bible is leading up to Jesus' birth. Now for those of you who don't know, Elizabeth is the mother of John the Baptist. And so, you know, it starts out, um, there's only one passage that mentions her and that's in the beginning of Luke. And it mentions that she and Zechariah had no children and that she was, and I'm just going to quote right here. Um, so the way that Luke describes Elizabeth and Zechariah, I'm just going to read from, from uh, Luke 1, 7 here. But they had no child because Elizabeth was barren and both were advanced in years. So what we find out about them is that they're a little bit older and they have no child. And what we know of the context of that culture at that time was that that was hugely disgraceful. Um, in fact, if I fast forward a little bit and go to verse 25 in that same chapter, after Elizabeth has become pregnant, right? She actually um, keeps herself hidden. She like stays at home for five months, right? And says, thus the Lord has done for me in the days when he looked on me to take away my reproach among people. And, you know, some translations say that is disgrace. And we know that a woman's really like the way that she is defined in ancient um, culture, like ancient Israel culture, is that if she has no children, she is considered cursed. All right. And, and she is considered disgraced among men. So we think about, you know, all the way from like Sarah and Hagar, right? Hagar despised her mistress because Hagar had a child and Sarah did not. We see Hannah, you know, Hannah is despised by Penina, her, her sister wife, because Hannah had no children and she grieved. It was like a big loss for her. So just before the miracle of John's con conception, right, with the, the angels and all that stuff, um, I just wanted to sit in that moment, right? Because from Elizabeth's perspective, nothing was going to change. Let's do a little math here, right? So average age that they got married there, probably sometime between 15 and 17, right? And advanced in years. Let's say maybe she was late 30s, early 40s. That is 25 to 30 years of not having kids. And, you know, putting myself in Elizabeth's, pers you know, in, in her perspective, if it hadn't happened by then, it probably wasn't going to happen. Right. And so Elizabeth had been sitting with this truth for decades at this point that she was she wasn't going to have any kids and that she was disgraced among humanity, among her culture for that. But and I wanted to go back to how Elizabeth and Zechariah were described. So in, in verse five, you know, I'm talking about Luke. Uh, one five. In the days of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah of the division of Abijah, and he had a wife from the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. 
and they were both righteous before God, walking blamelessly in all the commandments and statutes of the Lord. So what this tells me is that Elizabeth, despite the fact that she was despised, disgraced, had no children, she was still righteous and faithful. She was still righteous in God's eyes. And that I think really spoke to me, right? So here I am, sheltered in place, living at home. Uh, well, I mean, this is my house, right? Um, but, you know, this is a temporary thing. But that question of like, what, what happens if this is not temporary? What happens if this lasts for years? How would that make any difference, any difference at all to how I am faithful to God? And that really made me think. And so I posit this to you, my fellow sisters in Christ, in this time of shelter in place, in this time, let's say this, this lasts for months, let's say this lasts for years, are we counted righteous? And of course we are through the cross. And I think, you know, for, for us today, it is, are we counted as faithful? And what does that look like? And I know for a lot of you, you're regularly serving in the church, but the way that you're serving may look different now than I did before. And I think about, uh, you know, e even myself, like as a worship leader, as a small group leader, it's all about doing things in person with large groups. And, and that is completely different now. And so my question is like, how do I serve with my gifts? How am I faithful to God? It's not just about doing things and doing things for others, but how am I pursuing God in this moment? And so I look at Elizabeth. I look at the fact that despite, despite the, her inability to change anything about the fact that she had no children, the fact that she was despised, the fact that her culture valued her only for the fact that she could or could not bear children, that she was still faithful, that she was considered righteous, and that she walked blamelessly in the commandments. It's a lot to take in. And so, you know, my challenge to you is as we're talking, um, as we're discussing, to really grapple with that. What does it look like today, in today's context? Um, for me, a lot of things have changed, right? Um, a lot, a, a couple of new opportunities have come up. For instance, I've never been able to make the, um, the prayer service uh, on Sunday nights because I, I have a regular commitment on Sundays. Sunday afternoons that, that prevented me from coming. And so now that we're in shelter in place, I've actually been able to go and practice intercessory prayer. And I've been challenged to pray for people more often. There are also opportunities to practice spiritual disciplines that I am just terrible at, right? There are certain things really easy. Reading my Bible, very easy for me. Fasting, not easy. But I've been challenged to do that as a part of this church. Scripture memorization, also not easy. Don't have the time for it. But suddenly God's like, guess what? You have the time. So that's something that I've been practicing as well. And so my question to you is, no matter where you are, maybe this isn't the time, right? Maybe you have three children under the age of five. God bless you. I love you so much. And I am praying for you. But maybe you're not. Maybe you're like me, single and at home. Maybe, um, you know, you're empty nesters. Whatever it is, you know, now's our time to think about this and talk about this and grapple with this. In this really weird time where we have no assurance that things are going to end anytime soon, what does it look like to be faithful? Let's pray. God, as women, we desperately desire to seek you. And we know, God, that 
you know, in different phases in our life that you have met us in different ways. God, help us to be faithful, but help us to be faithful not only in doing for others, but also in pursuing you wholeheartedly. We love you so much, God. Teach us what it means to be faithful. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen.